So thank you, Andrea, for the introduction and sorry for not having probably the most uh, visually appealing presentation, but I was working uh, mainly with uh, administrative protocols, so there's really not so much uh, to show in this respect. Nevertheless, let me let me share the screen with you. So. Through the history, the International Association of Art Critics, which is also known as ICA, uh, played an instrumental role in distributing critical ideas and fostering the interaction between art historians, critics, and artists from various cultural and political backgrounds. To some extent, its aspirations reduced the artistic and ideological division between East and West and helped to create an elaborate web of connections through which the conflicting dynamics between the official and unofficial positions were constantly transformed by factors such as personal relationships, individual mobility, or informal diplomacy. To provide a better understanding of how this international association acted as a ground for stimulating exchange in different fields, I would like to offer an insight into the history of the Czechoslovak branch of ICA during the 1970s, which was a period mar marked by the restoration of firm party rule and uh, the evolving normalization process. However, before taking a closer look at the development of the 1970s, I'd like to present a short overview of the general history of the Czechoslovak section and thus briefly demonstrate how different political and institutional efforts shaped in position within the ICA over time. When discussing the chronology of the Czechoslovak section, it's necessary to return to the period following immediately after 1945, which was characterized by the establishment of organizations corresponding with the needs of the post-war cultural reconstruction. In the case of the creation of the International Association of Art Critics, the authorship of the whole concept can be attributed to Czech art historian and diplomat Moimir Vanek, who acted as the first director of the Fine Arts Section of UNESCO Preparatory Commission, itself founded in November 1945. Just for a broader context, the main task of this section was to draw up UNESCO's future program in the fields of arts. As for its implementation, Vanek came up with the proposition to convene art critics from all over the world for a, con for a conference, talk with them about the proposed projects and group them in an association that would be responsible for defending their professional interests. However, this meeting didn't take place Im immediately and it was only in June 1948 that the first international congress of art critics could be organized. Unfortunately, as we know from the accompanying protocols, Moimir Vanek wasn't present at the event, which was mainly related to the local political development that followed after the communist coup in February 1948, more specifically, as a result of political profiling in the spectrum of social democrats, Vanek was gradually deprived of all functions, accused of sabotage and imprisoned. Nevertheless, despite his absence, the, at least a few other delegates who managed to get travel permissions from the Ministry of Information attended the Congress so that Czechoslovakia could become the founding member of the newly established association. Since 1950, however, the Czechoslovak section had been rather inactive, which resulted from the country's integration into the interstate structures that corresponded to the strategic plans of the Soviet Union. Because of that, the Czechoslovak participation in the regular program wasn't renewed until the beginning of the liberalization process, which followed after the suppression of Stalin's cult of personality in 1956. Thank thanks to this shift, Czechoslovak delegates could finally participate in annual sessions in Palermo, Dubrovnik and Brussels, and they also prepared an excursion which followed the official meetings organized in Poland in 1960. On top of that, in 1966, Czechoslovakia earned the chance to host a regular Congress in Prague and Bratislava. Leaving aside the overall evaluation of this Congress, in particular the level of its professional discussions and accompanying exhibitions, which were in retrospect often criticized, there is no doubt that the Congress in question significantly contributed to strengthening Czechoslovakia's overall position within ICA, whether in official institutional terms or in terms of personal context. Despite the gradually deteriorating political curse caused by the invasion of Warsaw Pact troops in August 1968, 
Part of Czechoslovak section still managed to attend the General Assembly held in Bordeaux in September 1968, and a small group of particip participants participated uh, in the Congress held in Scandina Scandinavia a year later. The situation began to change only in the following months when, due to the country's federalization, it was agreed to set, set up two strictly selective national union of artists, which were based more on one's political profile than on the level of professional competence. This process also naturally affected the Czechoslovak branch of ICA, which depended on governmental regulation more than any years before. Consequently, most of its activities got under the control of the mentioned unions, which nevertheless supported only those members who were active also within their elitist structures. The first significant changes within this section thus occurred already in 1970, when a list of delegates for the upcoming Congress in Canada was being prepared. The most illustrative example is probably the case of issuing a travel ban for Indri Halupetsky, who was during about the same time also forced to resign from his post within the Union of Czech Artists. In addition to these changes, this development was also marked by the death of the president of section Czech theoretician Miroslav Michko, who was replaced by the former vice president and current, current director of the National Gallery in Prague, Jerzy Kotalik. Although, uh, thanks to his influential position in the Union of Czech Artists, as well as in the Executive Committee of ICA, Kotalik managed to act simultaneously in the interests of both sides. The activities of the local section further continue to depend mainly on the party ruled normalization process. Even though uh, that in 1972, Kotalik was proposed as one of the candidates for new president of ICA as such, Czechoslovak officials didn't reconsider their stance and instead began to accuse the association of spreading the contradictory, let's say, say non-Marxist tendencies. The official activity of the Czechoslovak section desktop in 1975, when Jerzy Kotalik was no longer able to compromise between the interests of the Union of Czech Artists and the interests of ICA, and so he resigned from the post of president. However, despite this abdication and many repressive measures, the autonomous production and unofficial international relations couldn't, not, couldn't be entirely eliminated. On the contrary, the context initially cultivated on the official level moved into the internal sphere of individuals and thus gained a different, but in many respects, more important character. To give an example, I'd like to mention the links between Czechoslovak art scene and French art critic Raoul Jean Moulin, which were established mostly thanks to ICA. Leaving aside the topic of Moulin's collaboration with artists such as Alex Minarchik, Stano Filo, Filko, of Orofero Kral, another essential contribution to the local development was his correspondence with several members of the Czechoslovak branch of ICA, especially with those who were stopped from any official activities during the 1970s. And just to know, since you cannot see it, uh, most of this correspondence uh, is today archived in, the, in Magval in Rennes and in two Prague institutions, which is the Museum of Czech Literature and the Archives of, of National Gallery in Prague. Uh, after Mulan began to hold more dominant roles within the ICA, especially from 1972 onwards, a key position within these exchanges began to be held by his correspondence with Jindrich Chalupetsky. Uh, Mulan used to inform the Czech critic about the current art situation in the West. He consulted with him several of his curatorial projects, most importantly, the Paris Youth Biennale. He shared with him several gestures of solidarity and helped him publish his papers in France. Regarding the activity of ICA, he also provided Chalupetsky with updates about the international congresses that he could no longer attend. Correspondingly, Chalupetsky tried to use this channel to gain support for his initiative to move part of the Czechoslovak branch to the so-called uh, independent section, in which the members who had lost the support of their national institutions could articulate their stances despite the restrictions existing on the official level. 
And as we know from one of his letters to Milan, uh, this idea of joining the independent section was shared especially by Václav Formanek, Juri Šetlík, Jaromír Zemina and Tomáš Strauss, who were in regular touch with each other and who devoted their discussions to the topics which often corresponded, corresponded to the problems discussed during the official sessions of ICA. Based on this impulse, Mulan took concrete steps to implement this plan after 1978 when Spanish art critic Alexandra Sirisi, who was particularly inclined to resolve the issue of the Czechoslovak absence, became the president of ICA. However, since Sirisi tried to focus not only on the membership of one part of the group, but rather on the Czechoslovak section as such, since it was still the founding section of ICA, the association's administration contacted the Czechoslovak authorities, which distances themselves from the ongoing discussions and took the measures preventing from finding any compromise. The impossibility of finding a unified solution was present also in the letters written by Halupetsky, who frequently stated that he felt like a member of the independent section, regardless of whether or not he was appointed to it. Continuing to focus primarily on his interests and the interests of other Czechoslovak members who shared similar destiny and opinions, Halpetsky sought to obtain and subsequently disseminate any information related to ICA's international activities and occasionally, again through Mulan, provided the association with information on the oppressed members of the Czechoslovak branch. In this specific way, he helped maintain at least partial awareness about the cultural circumstances in his country and, to some extent, provided the basis for more constructive negotiations about Czechoslovakia's partnership with ICA that follow its subsequent decade. But that would be a topic for another discussion. So thank you very much for your attention and, and again, sorry for, for the problem with my presentation. <laughs>